Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. We're picking up basically where we left off from the last episode. We still haven't finished setting up our stone mine down here, um, but we will do that soon. However, we've now had enough time to let the cannon shells accumulate a bit, as well as some piercing rounds. So we'll grab some of those for our tank. And we've got some regular cannon shells and 341 explosive shells. I think that's enough. We've got the upgrades done. Uh, where did I leave the tank? I think it's down here charging. <laughs> a meeting is not a substitute for basic management. You just like wrecked half of middle management in America right there. Uh, where did I leave the tank? Where's my car? There it is. Beautiful. Um, actually, that was not that helpful. Um, I guess you have to add a pin to make it really helpful. So yeah, I don't love that pins are here. Um, I know, I know this is a big deal, and like they're probably not going to change this. But the problem is, if you have like f even five pins, now it's taking, now it's making your tooltips even more squashed down into the bottom of the screen, which already was a problem, I feel like. I don't know. I wish they were like over here or something, um, personally. But, yeah. All that to say, uh, that's not what we want. <laughs> that's the tank maker. We don't want the tank maker, we want the actual tank. Where did I leave it? Oh, it's down here. Was that showing up on the map? It doesn't even show up on the map? What's the point of search? The heck? Wow. Coverx wants people to use tooltip under the cursor? Oh, that's awful. Blah. Makes me cringe. These tooltips are way too big to show up on top of the cursor. Um. Cursor tooltips are fine for certain things, but I don't... I think they just get in your way most of the time. Anyway, uh, what are we doing here? So we've got cannon shells, piercing rounds. I don't need a flamethrower. Oh! Oh! An uncommon tank! Wow! So we have more range in the uncommon tank too. The weapons in the vehicle get upgraded. So back to the car question. So a, so a quality car, it won't have a bigger equipment grid, but it, what it will have is better uh, weapon range. So that's super nice. We get 10% more range on these things, which is a pretty big deal. Um, all right, and then I need some fuel, which probably 13 coal is not enough. So let me grab some more. Can you use batteries for vehicle fuel? That would be kind of cool. Maybe. I guess it doesn't make sense if they're a combustion engine. They're not EVs. All right. There we go. Let's do this. What the heck? Did they change this? Reversing vehicles is wrong now? Oh my god, what is going on? I'm... Uh, okay. You guys can't experience what my fingers are doing. I'm backing up, and I'm turning to the right. And it's turning the vehicle to the right. Which is not what should happen. What the heck? Why is that reversed? It's like, like in a car when you, you know, you turn the wheels to the right. It goes the other way. You have tank controls. I don't understand why tank controls should be different than car controls. They can turn left or right. Why would it control differently? That is certainly an area where realism is not something that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, why did I just get out of the vehicle? Apparently space bar 
is exit vehicle. I remember loosely changing that, but. It's like this in 1.1 as well. I hear you. I still don't think it makes sense from a gameplay perspective. I realize that full length treads do different things to turn the vehicle, but it still turns the vehicle right and left. And if you were turn if you were doing the same thing you do to turn to the right while going backwards, it's still going to do the opposite. But I guess anyway i understand what you're saying i don't know if it makes sense from a gameplay perspective because because humans who are playing this game are used to driving cars not tanks so <laughs> i don't know anyway um what am i looking for vehicle interleave vehicle should not be spacebar clear that What happens if you're spinning at zero speed and then you press S? Would you expect it to suddenly change directions? Um, why can't I back up right now? Heck, that was weird. I couldn't back up at all. Maybe, maybe there was too much slowdown? Oh yeah, this feels good. Those shields, tanks are amazing now. Tanks are amazing. Well, this is fun. We should do this again sometime. The only sad thing is we can't drive through cliffs, so we still have to go around those. All right, everyone in the comments explaining to me how tank treads work. That is not what my point is about. <laughs> I understand how tank treads work. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the point I'm trying to make. Um, now, the the only rel the only actual thing relevant to what I've been talking about is Code Green's comment about what would happen if you were turning and then you tried to start backing up. Because because in a car you can't turn unless you're moving. So that is an actual relevant question to the point of what the behavior should be. Everyone else trying to just explain, well, that's how a tank works. Like, I understand that. My point is, in a video game, you can make it turn whichever direction you want when you press WASD on the keyboard. So it's kind of irrelevant what a tank does in real life. I don't think people come into a video game being like, expecting things to subvert their expectations when they're trying to turn a vehicle. I think when people hit D on the keyboard, they're expecting things to turn right most of the time. Um, so I, I don't think it would be... Yeah, like, exactly. The car and tank control differently, and that is weird, right? There is a reason for it, which is that tanks control differently in real life. So, like, it, once it's explained to people, I think they'll understand why it's different but I think it's actually weirder that it's different than it is weird that it would be the same. Yeah, in Code Green, you're not the average player, to be fair. The average player is not someone who's considering, wait, why would the, why is it doing the wrong thing when I reverse? That's what most players are going to experience. Because, again, we as humans have experience with cars, not tanks. Not to mention, you don't control tanks with a keyboard in real life either, so I don't know. It's like, I, I think there's there's multiple angles you could come at this. All right, how are we doing on Pollution Cloud here? That base is a long time away from being inside the cloud. Let's go take out this one. I do love the tank noises, though. Can we, oop, didn't mean to do that. Can we talk about how the tank noises are great? Ooh, but the multiplayer lag issue is fixed for driving vehicles. So for those who play multiplayer, you can celebrate. Vehicles will be much better now. Also, can we talk about how big of a deal equipment grid in tanks is? I would not have been able to do what I've been doing here very easily. Like, I would have been taking so much damage without shields, and now I'm taking no damage. 
So like the equipment grade in a tank is just absurdly powering it up to the point where it went from like meh to maybe overpowered now. The uh, My comment, weirdly, is that the equipment grid might be too big uh, by default, six by eight. I feel like it could be six by four or even six by five maybe. And that would be good enough. Oh yeah, yeah, there's, there's a new little feature which makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, makes a lot of sense. You can drive things remotely now. Um, and that makes sense because obviously like being able to control Spider-Trons when you're not on the planet, like that, that's become important now in Space Age. But yeah, I don't have to be in the tank. I kind of, I kind of did forget about that. So, <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, best way to prank your friends. Yeah, now you can just kamikaze your tanks into them. But yeah, I mean, being able to use like a Spider-Tron to remote construct things, I, I think it, it would be annoying to not be able to move vehicles remotely. So I'm glad that they added that. <laughs> One more thing that can run over you. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's another good point, Code Green. It allows you to it allows you to um, defend your base remotely too. Oh, you can't do cars remotely. Interesting. Get out of here. So that base is done. Um, tanks do not have logistics, but they do have uh, equipment grid. So you can do construction bots in them. Wait, tanks have logistics requests? They do? Confused. Would it would it gain logistics requests if I put a roboport in it? One card always tells the truth, one lies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, will it gain logistics requests now if I do that? Mm, doesn't seem like it. Oh, with it is that just unlocked when I research? Um, I haven't researched. Ah, there it is. Yeah, you need the logistics system. And it makes sense that they lock it behind this. Spider-trons are after this, so Spider-trons probably don't need it to be unlocked because they're this late in the thing, but okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, anyway, uh, what did I just change this? I don't need that. Put you back in my personal grid and keep demolishing some biters here. This, I don't necessarily like how long these cliffs are unbroken. On the one hand, it makes defending along them easier. On the other hand, it does make getting up the cliff quite a bit more tricky. But then that makes spider trons all the cooler, I guess. So there's that. How are we doing on shells here? I've got, still got a decent amount, but we are you're using them. Um, okay, so really probably these four bases here and I'll be good for a while. You can disable logistics while moving. Yeah, couldn't you do that before? Am I making that up? For whatever reason, my brain is telling me we could do that before, but maybe we couldn't. damaged myself. Uh, Alright, so... We are never gonna go back to vanilla? Yeah, for sure. I mean, why would you? But, like, for sure not. What I, what I don't know is if... Oh, gosh. 
I don't know like what all of these features are in 2.0 versus Space Age. Like, is remote driving vehicles a 2.0 thing? Or is that a Space Age thing? Like, I assume that's a Space Age thing. Not in 2.0. But yeah, no, I, I completely love the new cliffs, don't get me wrong. It, it makes them far more set pieces of the terrain rather than just random junk. Before, they were just random junk. Uh, that would get in your way, randomly help you sometimes, but not help you a ton. But now they help you a ton. Like, this is one long, unbroken cliff wall. So it makes sense to actually try to use it naturally as a wall. Before, it would just be broken by little segments all over the place, so you'd still have to build turrets all along the thing anyway. Um, but, yeah, now they're much better. Dark Shadow, what is YouTube sensor? It makes something more powerful. So you could always do pre-world settings in future for Cliff. I do like that... Um, I do like that the new Cliffs are better, partially because it's a lot harder to get Cliff explosives now. So if the new Cliffs were like the old Cliffs, not getting Cliff explosives till Vulcanus would have been very frustrating. Where are you going? That was weird. Um, all right, so we got that base. So I probably will take this one out because this is desert. It'll spread pretty quick to over there. It's not going to hit these bases for a long time because there's trees and grass in between. Let's use our armor piercing rounds for fun. Also, someone earlier was saying you actually love, yeah, Conblem, you were saying you love fighting biters even though it can get repetitive. I, I do too. I think it's fun when you finally have something like the tank and you can just kind of wreck a base. I think it's less fun in the beginning when turret creep is the optimal strategy because I just, I don't think turret creep is that fun. And it's also kind of unfun that it's the best way to do things. I would personally appreciate a setting, or no, sorry, I need to rephrase this. I would appreciate a game balanced around turret creep not being possible. Like, I know there was one mod, was it Crastorio back in the day or no? Yeah, there's a big biters, by the way. Um, there was a mod that basically made it so you, you just weren't allowed to build turrets within like 40 tiles of a nest or something, or 50. It was, a, it was a long range that you couldn't build um, turrets within, and that forced you to not turret creep. You could obviously build turrets close to the nest, so you could lure at least the initial army back to the turrets, but you couldn't ever use turrets to kill the bases themselves. And I actually liked that. I felt like that made it more interesting, because then you had to figure out what are the ways that I personally can go fight a biter nest. Obviously, things were balanced around that, so some of the personal stuff was more powerful or easier to get or whatever. But I just don't find turret creep up to the nests themselves to be that fun. And then you're just dropping ammo in the turrets and I love it. Yeah, you can see now why they made the spawners have more health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these, uh, these spawners having a thousand health is not really posing much of an issue for us, is it? It really is not. Um, did anyone answer who knows Code Green? I feel like you're the most likely person to know. Did you, did you mention if the remote driving is a 2.0 thing or just a space age thing? Or do you not know? Is it still feasible to run over a spawner in a tank? Now that might be less feasible. Okay, wait, we're going way farther north here. Pretty sure it's only space age. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking since it feels like a remote view type thing. Is 2.0 getting the remote view improvements or just, again, like there's so many little things that affect features that are kind of the base game, but I don't think vanilla is getting all of them. Um, 
Before I try running over the spawners, I do want to take out the worms. Uh-oh, wait, I'm out of fuel? Oh, it doesn't auto-refuel. Well, I'm just gonna accidentally kill all the spawners, apparently. I'm trying to just kill the worms, but that doesn't seem very possible without using bullets. Let's switch to bullets here. to not get spittered so I can go full speed. Also, I'm using coal instead of something that boosts my speed. Do you do more damage to run over stuff if you're going faster in the tank? I assume you do. Uh, yeah, we didn't... That spawner wasn't even at quite 100%. We couldn't take it out. Right now, the spawners are at 1,200 health, full health. Hey, silly squirrel, you finally found a non-speedrun Factorio streamer. Yeah, I am not a speedrunner, that's for sure. I'm a slow runner, if anything. Impact damage is based on speed. I'm wondering how, though. Is it like some sort of curve? Is it linear? Does going twice as fast mean twice as much damage? More than that? Less than that? Is it using momentum? You know? Or something else. What happened here? This looks weird. I guess it's just the trees, and these haven't been mining iron for a while? Okay, that's what- yeah, that's what happened. Just looks weird when pollution's not a contiguous blob. Uh, that always scares me a little bit. Okay, so I do think we're pretty good to go. Maybe I'll take out these two now since I'm already here, but... Probably don't have to. And we're actually almost out of shells. Let me switch to um, standard cannon shells and see what those are like. They do way more damage, but they don't have a splash damage zone. But these things do freaking 1900 damage, so these are going to one-shot nests for a long time. Is tank more damage than the car when running over stuff? Oh, yes, certainly. Certainly more damage. But yeah, these are like sniper shots. Oh, went right between that water. Kind of on accident, but it looked cool. Honestly, regular cannon shells are pretty good too. Um, I'm wondering though what the point of them is when the expensive, or expensive, explosive cannon shells are only one more like, they're the exact same recipe, so it kind of feels like explosive cannon shells are better, but I don't know, maybe there's a world where you use the regulars. Regulars are pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, like, the problem with the regulars, though, is it's just more work to kill everything, and the, and the explosives still do so much damage. Maybe there's a world where you've got, uh, you know, I guess I'm thinking, I was about to say the rampant mod, you know, or whatever, but at least with vanilla health values, I don't think you're ever gonna need normal shells just because the explosive ones deal so much damage. I've, I've only done up through green and military science, and there's still another damage upgrade for shells once we get uh, yellow science. And then the explosive shells are going to be even more absurdly damaging, right? So, yeah, for sniping nests, the regulars are better. It's true. But I think if your goal is just to steamroll through a base and kill everything, which is nine times out of ten what you're doing in a tank, I feel like the explosives are just a little easier to, to manage because they're like, they're killing biters and worms and nests all at the same time, um, which is nice. Alright. Happen to have some more mining drills, so we'll get this finished up. And yeah, our pollution cloud is now pretty well under control. Um, 
or I should phrase that differently. The biters are pretty well under control, so they're not near our pollution cloud. <laughs> um, the problem is expansion. Uh, I'm curious, where's the show? Uh, show expansion. I don't remember what it's named. Yeah, okay. So this is kind of cheating, but whatever. Uh, I'm just curious, like, how far they can expand. It's medium far. So they, but like, we're at the point where they'd basically need to expand close to us twice to get in the, in the radius. Ooh, poison capsules would help a lot too, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I didn't work on any capsules because I knew the tank would be plenty, but if you were on like a, a death world or something, I'm guessing that would be that would be worth your time. To make those poison capsules. What are the effects of pollution? Uh they just attract oh gosh. Didn't realize my base was this close. Uh they just attract biters. Basically, so biters will send enemies based on pollution, and more pollution increases the evolution factor of biters, uh, but that's that's really it. All right, so someone was asking uh, if our, if our uh, not sorter, balancer thing down here was working. We don't know yet for sure because we haven't set up the train, but we think it works based on small amounts of testing. So I now have... Mining drills. I don't have enough. Let me go grab some more mining drills and then we'll finish setting this up. And I will also grab stack inserters. I will get rid of a bunch of ammo. Let's not put it in the trash. Let's actually just put it here. And then... Let's see. Stack inserters. Nope. Sorry. Sorry. Bulk inserters. <laughs> I'll get it figured out someday. Um, let's put you guys. That habit will die hard. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. Uh, let's actually trash all. Nah. Maybe everything over 100 yellow belts gets trashed. Once in a while I might want to be just replacing them in, in place, and I don't want them all to automatically yeet into the trash. Do I have enough rail stuff to build everything we need? I think so. Do I have enough chests? Yes. Do I have enough miners? Probably need some more miners. Do I have enough power poles? Yes. All right, let's go get that stone mine. <laughs> you call them stack and real stack inserters? Yeah, that's basically what we're gonna need to do. Ultimate inserters? Yeah, I don't know, it's just, I. it was so confusing to call something a stack inserter when it literally didn't use the mechanic called stacking. Right? So I, I really think they made the right uh, move to change it. It is, however, also confusing that they changed the name, but I don't think there was a better way to do it. You installed a mod to rename them? Oh god, you're, you're gonna be part of the problem. You're just gonna continue perpetuating the community's confusion. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's see. We want to go here and there. At least captures the left, bottom left corner. It is weird. You can't shift click while you're in the middle of click dragging all of those. Uh, by that I mean like when I was click dragging and I was over here and some of the blueprint was blocked. I can't then click and let go of shift to then place that one bit uh, like I was shift clicking. That would be a nice little quality of life thing. 
All right, and then this comes over, and this comes over, and this comes over. I wonder if I can find my suggestion from a million years ago on what the quality names should be. It felt like a decent suggestion. The pro- Here's the problem. Look. The reason they kept it is because nobody could even agree on what the changes should be. If the entire community had figured like, ooh, we could call it one, two, three, four, five, and they all sounded perfect to everybody, and the entire community was in an uproar about what the exact change should be and why it's better, I think that might have been a convincing argument. The problem is, the entire community... Okay. I say the entire community. Half the community was fine with it the way it was, and they didn't complain. Or some percentage. And then... The other... Um, the other half was like, Hey, this sounds weird. A legendary inserter doesn't make much sense. So... That half of the community that wanted to rename them all decided to come up with lots of names and they all were very different than each other. So I think the 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 thing here is that nobody can really agree on what it should be anyway, so why not just make it the thing that at least everybody understands? Even though I may not like the idea of a legendary steel chest, I at least understand that legendary is by and large the best steel chest, right? So, like, it's a little lore annoying, but as far as understanding, back to the tank driving argument, like, this harkens back to why tanks should drive like cars. It's the exact same argument as why they're calling it legendary. As the actual player playing the wall, I'm breaking the fourth wall here, I'm acknowledging that this is a video game that people are just playing, legendary is the most understandable thing to call the highest quality. Even though it may not really make sense in a factory game. So... All that to say, I, I just think the alternatives were very uh, varied and they weren't consistent enough. It wasn't like the community had some great idea where like everybody liked this other idea. With quality, all of the people that don't like the legendary all have different ideas on what they should be called. Um, I'm going to see if I can find my old post on Discord real quick. What did I call it? Quality... It was from a long time ago. I guess I have to search Discord from... How do I do date? Okay, before... It would have been before... When did they announce quality? It was a long time ago. It would have been before January 1st of this year. And I'm looking for the word quality. Okay, I think I had standard, good, great, masterwork, perfect. Yeah, that's not the best. It's just, yeah, it's just hard. I, I can't really think about what the better names would be. And exactly, PT, the only way there will be a new normal is if everybody gets the same mod. The problem that I'm seeing is that mods won't all uh, do the same thing. There will be multiple mods, and it'll kind of only work if everybody gets the same mod that changes them to the same thing. Otherwise, we're going to have a mess all over again. So we want those to be bulk inserters. We want these to be regulars. And I'm only looking to get one belt of stone here, so I can just do a one to four arrangement. And probably... No, no, no. What am I thinking? This... Well, I maximize the train loading if I do it this way. Because then I'm more I have more chestfuls. Um So I probably should do it like that. Oop. Just barely fit all that in there. Okay. As far as the colors, I completely agree with the color choices, uh, for what it's worth. It's it's more the uh, the naming convention that is a little more sus.
Normal, good, great, excellent, perfect. No, that's... So, good and great. I agree with the good and great. It's obvious that great is better than good. And it's obvious that good is better than normal or standard. Normal and standard would both work, I think, for the... Or basic, even. Um, those could all work. The problem is excellent. Excellent versus great. That's actually not clear uh, which one is better. And you might have an argument for why you think it's it's clear, but like on average, if you were to have everybody rank the qualifier words, excellent and great are in the same ballpark. And that's what makes it tough. Did I not bring the locomotive down here? I swear I did. Oh, I think I mined it. I think I mined it. Excellent is longer and therefore better. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, why am I going back? Oh, I'm trying to build power poles. Whoops. Back it up. Back it up. There we go. <laughs> oh, you want you want the bottom layer to not even be the basic one? You want the basic one to be the uncommon one? That would be confusing, Alor. If basic wasn't the one that you make by default. Code Green, I do agree that on average people are going to put excellent above great if they had to rank them t compared to each other. But there's two types of taste tests. There's taste tests where you are actually comparing the two at the same time. I've got one whiskey here, I've got another whiskey here, and I'm going back and forth to see the differences, right? That's the best kind of taste test. It's much easier to compare. You would put excellent above great. What's harder is if you're just having the one to five scale and someone randomly hands you the word excellent. That's a little trickier. And then on a different day, unrelated, someone hands you the word great. You're going to put excellent and great in pretty similar spots is the problem. Um, so that that's where you get into issues. Uh, Dwarf Fortress. I've I've already complained about the Dwarf Fortress one for some similar reasons. I think exceptional versus superior quality versus masterful. Those are all very confusing to me. I don't think I don't think the Dwarf Fortress ones are actually very good. I think people just get used to playing Dwarf Fortress. There's my hot take. Um, anyway, let's make a let's make a train stop name for this guy, and we'll be almost there. Hey, Singularity, thanks for the follow. Masterful is a decent end. I think perfect is better. I think perfect is the best word to use, just because it's uh, perfect is obviously the best. Just like, just like legendary is obviously the best. Um, all right, what are we doing here? Uh, stone. I guess we can just do stone load. That's fine. I don't know how big of a train system we're gonna end up with on this planet. Um, isn't the same true for the? The ones we have right now um yes and no the difference is that every rpg ever uses the uncommon rare epic legendary system not literally every rpg but many of them do and many of them use the same colors so what wuba went with is like we're gonna do the thing that people just understand from culture rather than try to come up with our own new system that's you know quirky and different and we like it so, if you're gonna pick something, that is a, re a good reason to pick it. Um, so I, I can at least get behind that. All right, so we'll just designate this as two-way so the trains don't get confused. I mean, just look at how much you guys are arguing in the comments about this. It just furthers my point that if they're gonna do something that is that people are gonna argue about anyway, they might as well do the thing that more people understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I think that just continues to make my point for me, because because people just can't agree, and even I even I don't 
agree with what you guys are saying about those things because I have my own opinions. You know, it's like it's just a funny thing. So I think at the end of the day, as much as I don't love the idea of a legendary steel chest, I just don't have a better idea that works for the average community is the problem. You derailed the stream. No, no, no. I derailed the stream. I love talking about crap like this. All right, so we'll do that and then maybe just I don't know how many trains we're going to have. Probably not that many. Why is that not working? That feels weird. There we go. OK, so then. We need to refuel it is the problem. Oh, look. How, how hard is it to make solid fuel? Uh, Not hard. Not hard at all. Because we have this, what feels like cheating recipe for petroleum. You don't even need water. I can literally just do this. And then I can do this. All right. <laughs> don't derail though. The whole point of the rail network is for it to last. Ah ha 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 ha. Yes, yes, yes. I guess we should have a few. Do we, no, we don't need multiple stacks buffering. This is a very short train track. Oh, I didn't even think about rocket fuel, but yeah, you need water for rocket fuel. All right, so then this train is gonna go. Download, don't unload, full cargo, empty cargo. Perfect. Hopefully it has enough fuel to get there. I guess we'll find out. And back. <laughs> Gray sauce, green sauce, blue sauce, purple sauce, and golden sauce. <laughs> random death machine added to the world? Yes, exactly. Our, our chance for a random death has just gone up by some large percentage. Ah, oh, I forgot the radar. Dang. All right. Hopefully. Oh, good. I can actually see how full it is. That's slower than I imagined it would have been. I wonder why. Maybe it's because the, the crates didn't have enough. Probably. The thing I don't... I, I can pretty universally say from a game design decision standpoint, which of course I'm not, I'm not the only voice on this, nor am I perfect, but I don't think that having the default thing you create be called poor, like I don't think having a derogatory word to describe the millions of items that you make by default, I don't think that's good. At least for a factory game. For a game where you start out as a in, in an RPG where you're like a noob, a noob and your smithing level is low and you make a poor quality iron sword, that feels fine. But what I don't think is a good idea is doing that in a factory game. I think in a factory game, the basic quality needs to be something like basic or normal or standard. Like you should be making a very neutral item from the beginning, not a poor quality because then your entire base is built out of poor quality iron plates and that just that's weird um i missed my train sitting here talking mainly because i was trying to decide shouldn't we have more than one belt actually feeding in um I actually want to do this. You think quality should have been done where you start with the best you can make and there are chances to tear down. Ooh, upside down quality. That's interesting. There's a hot take for you. It's not a bad take. It certainly is interesting. I would have to think a lot more about the implications of that. 
Um, I also have a name in game redemption I still need to do for Iron Ghost here. <laughs> Terrible, bad, mediocre, subpar, and all right. Yay, I finally have my all right iron plates. <laughs> Uh, calling things, calling quality tiers would be a mistake because we're already calling like a tier two assembler, a tier three assembler, tier three productivity module. Um, so we'd have to use Q and quality, not T for tier. All right. Are these balanced? Who knows? So the problem What is the problem? This would be more if I was receiving trains that were not equally loaded. This system would be good. But given that I have full cargo as a condition and things are being split evenly on the loading end, I just didn't need this chaos. I like it. I'm glad I did it, but I didn't need it. <laughs> Certainly didn't need it. All right, we have enough stone and at least for now we have enough copper and the base is all stopped up because we haven't been researching anything for a while so let's get some things unlocked here let's actually start with lab research speed and then we'll go for uranium mining just to have that unlocked we'll do some short researches like landmines defenders and flamethrowers we'll get breaking force we'll get lasers going pretty sure you need ltn for this yeah exactly Quality one through five would have made sense. Honestly, two uppy, that might be the second best idea. Like, I think that might be the most competitive idea with what they did is just Q one through five. Done. Q obviously stands for quality and they still keep the pips and the colors, but they just call it Q one through five. I honestly think of all the different ideas, that is the best one. Um. Because it just, it's, it's again, back to, like, every single player inherently understands where four is on the hierarchy without having to look at the whole hierarchy together. And that's true of all the numbers. Uh, people would argue whether Q1 or 5 is the best quality. I, I think, I think most people agree that as quality gets higher, the numbers would go up. Because um, it's not like it's saying first quality and fifth quality. It's saying quality one, quality two. So I think bigger number better makes sense there for most people. Um, especially because it also aligns with the number of pips. One pip, Q1, two pips, Q2. Like that, that I think that actually adds up pretty good. So. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, I feel like my base is kind of not doing anything anymore because I haven't asked it to do anything for a while. So that means we need to automate a new science pack. That's what that means. Let's work towards logistics bots so we can actually get bot-based things going. I was also talking about a second belt of iron, but I might not do that quite yet. Uh, let's bring plastic forwards here. Train stations, higher priority is prioritized. That is a place where it is confusing. When you're thinking, priority systems always should tell you. Do train stops tell you or do they not tell you? If they don't tell you, they should tell you. Um, they should always tell you because that's something that is different all over the planet in all kinds of situations. Okay, good. It does tell you right here. Higher priority train stop will be served first. And it also serves first. And then it even tells you zero is lower and 255 is higher. Thumbs up. Because that is intrinsically confusing if it's not explained. Simply because it's done the other way in about half of the applications. <laughs> like, is high priority one or is high priority nine? Different games do it differently. It's, it's a mess. 
All right, so if we're going to automate yellow science, I should probably research it sooner. Wait, is it yellow that we want? Or do we want to go for those delicious yellow assemblers? I guess we'll just work on both, to be honest. Um, so let's just get both researched. No, we're not going to go to space yet. We are going to go to space today, don't worry. We still have many, many hours in our 12-hour stream. But I think I want to get purple and, and yellow signs figured out first. So, purple is three packs every 21, so I need seven. And I'll build them out here. So we've got plenty of space. And then... Yeah, here we go. All right, so we need three ingredients. I'll probably put beacons on the output end. Which actually leads me to wonder, should I? Because yellow is also the same time. Maybe I should put... Just to make use of beacons. Maybe I'll put the yellow ones here. Wait, what am I doing? No. That there. Beacons there. And these will be the yellow science makers. I'll bring the ingredients from afar. So I'll just preemptively put in a belt like this. So that'll be... Oh, we need more belts. That'll be yellow science. How can you have... Plenty of space when you're on the ground. Well, you know, it just happens to make sense somehow. It is weird that we use the word space for... I mean, we call it space because there's just a lot of space out there. Like, that feels... That feels almost childish. <laughs> in a way. You've seen screenshots in FFF and Troop and Stream, lots of beacons next to each other. Did the beacon nerf change get reverted, or are people just resorting to old habits? Um, a little bit of both, PT. Well, not both, but just the chain. It's not a huge nerf, and more beacons is still better. It's just that each additional beacon has slightly less of an effect. Also, look at this. We can craft space platform foundations already. We're, we're basically there. Um, we also call Earth Earth. Which meaning came first? That's the real question. Okay, so anyway, we are gonna need a lot of stuff for these guys. So, let's start with the rails. That one's the easiest. So I'm gonna need 30 rails every, what am I doing here? I need seven craftings of this every 21 seconds. So I need two ten. So I need ten rails per second. Oh my god! Jeez. Ten rails per second. Okay. Well, that's a lot. Um. Ten rails. And again, we're saying per second, but I'm ignoring the, the speed of 0.75, which unfortunately means the numbers it shows me over there to the right are not exactly what I want to see. So like that says three per second, but I'm guessing three of these is actually more than what we need because these are only going 75% of the speed. Because rails intrinsically craft at four per second. So yeah, I just need two and a half rail crafters. Um, and then they use one, two sticks per second each, so I need six sticks per second. Um, and a stick maker, stick maker, stick maker, make me a stick, makes four per second. So I need one and a half of the stick makers. So should I do something like this? And then there are sticks taken care of. And 
And then we can put steel and stone on the other. Um, lousy gravity is holding science down. Ex exactly. Good pun. Good pun. All right. Uh, as far as rates on stone, we said we needed 10 rails a second, which means I need five stone a second and five steel a second. Jeez. We are, we are going to go broke trying to provide for these. That much I am certain of. Just power shard them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where are my power shards? Where are my sloops? Where are my summer sloops at? Also, can we talk about um, the the massive difference in how quickly you can double your production in Satisfactory versus how long it takes in Factorio? Production modules, I mean, I could make tier one production modules, but that basically does nothing at this point. Um, it's very interesting that Satisfactory gives you the ability to fully double your production. I almost feel like Summer Sloops should come in stages in in Satisfactory, where at first, even when you unlock the ability to put them in, they only provide maybe a 25% boost. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I could put prod mods in the labs. That wouldn't be a bad idea. But at the same time, science costs are just not that huge yet, so I just don't think we need them. Tier 1 modules are cool. Because they don't have too big of a negative downside. I do agree with that. Um, so I, I really should... Because I already set up production of, of these quality modules, I probably should also set up... Um, like, I should do something like this. And then set up the other modules, just so I have a few of each going and don't worry I'm doing it um, I already have these give them a chance for quality here uh, we need a bunch more of these guys ooh these are automated I need to request them And then, all right, now how are we gonna do this? Logistic network connect? How did I do, how did I do this one? No, I said everything is less than, okay. So I actually do need wires if I'm gonna do it that way. Code Cone, you really want to try quality out? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Bottom one lacks screen. Uh, yeah, no, 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 we're good. Satisfactory needs to let you double. Yeah. Yeah, Satisfactory is certainly a bit polarizing in how people feel about the, the construction in it. But, but I think I think some of that comes from people comparing it to one to one to Factorio. If you're comparing it one to one to Factorio, there's a lot of things to complain about, and you're gonna have a bad time. But I think Satisfactory is really amazing, and you just need to change your mindset. And some people aren't gonna like the game, which is fine because they may not like the type of game that it ends up being. Um, but I think it, it works quite well for what it is. All right, so this will give me some modules. So speed, energy consumption, and productivity. Cool, cool, cool. Those will slowly build up over time. And back to this chaos. So I needed stone and steel on this belt. I guess I need one more space. Steel's here. Um, oh, I can't use the underground trick here because I can't then underground the... I have to do it this way. Um, 
Because then I, I wouldn't be able to underground the coal, is the word I'm looking for. All right. Throw that up there. Yeah, Code Green. I think there's a few more similarities than that, but I, mostly I agree. There, it's bad. It's bad to compare the games directly. It's bad to say. I was, I was hoping there, I could turn off the belt thing somehow. I guess the easy way to do it is just copy a blueprint belt and do that. Um, but yeah, trying to compare the games directly. When people say which game's better or tell me why this game's better, it's like that's probably not a great perspective to take. I think where you can compare the experiences a little more directly is when you're comparing elements of the gameplay. Because um, then I think you can kind of break it down a little better. Because there are certain elements that are maybe trying to be similar about each game. Um, and then it's easier to talk about what is or isn't frustrating about one game or the other. But because I think for me, at the end of the day, I just prefer being able to automate more stuff quicker. You get more of that distilled essence of factory building, whereas Satisfactory is is more like modded Minecraft in some ways, where it ends up being a bit more like it's about the experience of building. It's about the, the visual of your architecture. You know, there's a lot of like those vibes going on that make the game good, which is something you don't get at all in Factorio. And some people that's the only reason they play the game is for that creativity and building cool buildings and getting the feeling of walking around your factory. That's really neat. And Factorio doesn't offer that at all, right? And so it's like there are elements that exist in Satisfactory that don't even exist at all in, in Satisfact or in Factorio. So yeah, all that to say, I agree that they're basically just completely different games. And it's best to keep them separate in your mind rather than comparing them and some people don't like Satisfactory, which again is fair. You don't have to like it. Um, my argument is simply, I think you're making a mistake if you're comparing Factorio to Satisfactory. Check your power. Uh, our power is actually okay for now, but it probably won't be when this all turns on. Um, Factorio is great because copy paste actually works. It is, I did miss copy paste um, for sure. All right, so that's the rail part done. I don't actually want that there. Oh, I forgot. Look, guys, we can robot request robots. <gasps> Ooh, I'm going to make sure there's at least 10 logistics bots in every single one and 10 construction bots. <sighs> Ooh, I love that. That's so cool. Now, you can't set a maximum. That feels a little weird. Does it get rid of them if you put more in? No. So then what if one is already full? Hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on comments. Make sure I didn't miss anything too important. Yeah, like what if this is already full on, Uh, you know, like, logistics bots, and then it doesn't have any room to request the 10 construction bots. It feels weird you can't put a max. Interesting. Um, PT, I think, like I totally get your perspective. Your perspective is valid. I think your only mistake is you're using the word base building is annoying. I think the word you're missing is it's annoying to me. A lot of people love the base building in Satisfactory. They don't think it's annoying. And they're not wrong for not thinking that. So I think the issue here is that you have some personal things that you don't, or there are some things personal to you that you don't love about the game, and that's totally fine. It's just that not everybody shares that perspective. And so you're kind of trying to take something that is your personal opinion and making it an objective truth about the game. Lots of people love the base building in Satisfactory. All right, so how many... Oh, God, we're already at an hour and four minutes for this YouTube episode. This 12-hour stream is going to be gone in a blink, isn't it? I do want to get to space. We're going to we're gonna rush to space in the last few hours, even if our base isn't ready for it. Don't worry. We will go to space in this stream. Um, So 
Electric furnaces, I only need seven every 21 seconds. So that's one third per second. Therefore, and each one of these is 0.2 per second. So I only need two furnaces. Or two assemblers making furnaces. And then if they're 0.2, well, I, it's a third per second still. And a third of one of these is three stone brick. Well, 3.33 stone brick and even more steel. And so I need uh, 3.33 stone brick per second. That's what I'm currently mulling over, which is going to be about nine furnaces ish. Something like that. Um, Shape as was a great game and I highly recommend it to anyone that is on the fence for sure. I would agree that it's 2.5D. Code Green, you're like it is full 3D from a graphics perspective, but and from a building perspective, it's 3D in the sense that you can build on multiple Z levels, but you still have limited Z levels and there's no angles of things. So like it's very much I think 2.5D is a fair at least gameplay wise a fair thing to call it. Um, because that makes me think of, uh, you know, like Dyson Sphere program, I would also say is like 2.5D, even though it's literally on a sphere and a 3D game, uh, it's kind of 2.5D in how the gameplay actually works. <laughs> is Ribbon World Factorio one dimensional? Ooh, asking the hard questions. Um, maybe. No, these need to be one further away. Because what I'm going to do, I also need red chips up here. Um, Don't worry, I have a plan. I know you guys are seeing what I'm doing and thinking this guy is crazy. But we've got a plan. Got a plan, Stan. So the plan is... We bring red chips up. We smelt the bricks on this line. What did I say we needed? 3.2 times 3.333 times 10 thirds. So I need 11 furnaces. Dear goodness, that's a lot of furnaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Sheesh. <laughs> Real life is 2.5D. <laughs> I mean, you're not totally wrong. Gravity is a restrictive dimension, right? Um, so in a way, yes, real life is also 1.5 or 2.5D. Because we can't really make like that kind of comes back to like the three degrees of freedom games like Descent. Such a good game, by the way. I love that game. Um, but like having a three degree of freedom shooter is very different than a 3D FPS shooter like Halo. Like you can jump and you can go upstairs, but you can't walk up, right? Like that's very different. So so the gameplay wise, they are a different feel in terms of dimensions, even though they're both 3D. So a game like Descent, where all three dimensions are equally free, is different than a game like Halo, where even though it's 3D, the third D, is not really free dimension. So I, I think that's a similar, it's still a little different than how the gameplay differs in like Dyson Sphere Program or Shapez, because Dyson Sphere Program and Shapez actually fully limit, they're almost like two and a quarter dimensions because they actually fully limit the Z dimension and there's no ramps, there's no, it's like you literally are just, you're on Z level one, two or three. So it's almost like three levels of two dimensions. So that, it's really not, uh, I don't think it's fair to call it fully 3D. Yes, 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 fourth spatial dimensions. We could go into that rabbit hole for a while. I'm seeing if the fast inserters are fast enough to keep up. And it seems they are. 
Okay. So there's that. Um, also, SMO, you asked a question earlier. <laughs> also, Blank, you're saying you're going to suffer for purple and yellow. Yeah, we're suffering through purple science right now. I haven't even built the hardest part, which is the next prod modules. Um, but how do I, how does it feel to use quality? SMO, I don't know yet. We haven't used quality enough to really know. I think once we have recyclers and stuff, we're going to dive a lot more into actually trying to make things quality. For now, I've just done the roulette and made 50 modular armors and 40 tanks to, oh, 24 tanks, just to get some uncommon of the combat stuff. I haven't done much else with quality yet. All right, so let's plan blue and we're going to plan the blue circuits for this. And we're going to plan the red circuits for the productivity modules at the same time. And it's going to be horrible. So we're going to need just some places to write text. So as much as I don't like it, I am going to place a few of these. Um, cause we're going to need to keep track of some stuff here. So let's think. So the first thing is we're going to need seven. So I, you know what? Sorry, YouTube. I think we're going to have to just cut it here because <laughs> we're already an hour and 10 minutes, uh, and not YouTube live. Ugh, it's so confusing now that I'm multi-streaming. So, because I'm basically doing three different versions at once. I'm streaming to Twitch, I'm streaming to YouTube Live, and I'm also recording for future YouTubians. So, we're going to keep streaming, but for future YouTubians, I think we will have to call it an episode here as we are working on our yellow and purple science. And uh, as always, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all in the next episode.